Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhair Bakka, and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that was played between the world champion Magnus Carlsen and David Navarra. Both the grandmasters fighting it out in the round two of the Shamkir chess tournament in April 2018. Now I chose this game because uh, I love playing the Karukan defense from black, which starts off with pawn to c6, followed by d5. And then you will try to take out the light square bishop first on f5 before closing the diagonal for the bishop and playing e6. And then probably find out a good square for your dark square bishop. Uh, maybe that's d6 in the game. And then the knight to uh, f6. The other knight can come on d7. Queen can also make some place like c7. So that's a very good uh, solid opening where you are not going uh, too far into the, into the opponent's court. Rather, you are just developing your pieces in a very solid way. Before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on to the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the interesting videos that I'm posting up daily. I'll make sure that there's something to be learned every time you watch a video here. So yeah, let's start off with the game. Magnus plays e4 here, standard opening from white generally, e4, e4, e5 openings are pretty common um, here since he played e4. Navarra plays c6, uh, the Karukan defense. And whenever you see a chance to uh, take control of the center, you generally go for it. That's what Carlsen did by playing d4. Navarra responds with d5. And here Magnus plays e5. Now generally when you are playing the Karukan defense, uh, you will see three options. Uh, there are three options with the opponent here, which he can go with. Probably the, the simplest one is to take on the pawn uh, on d5. And if that happens, it becomes the Karukan defense exchange variation. You will see some lines where uh, white will just leave the pawn here as it is and develop, continue developing his pieces. Uh, that can be knight to c3, so that even if you try to take on the pawn in the next move, Knight can take back uh, on e4. That is another way of playing. And th the third way, which is the most challenging line in the Karukan defense, is the Karukan defense advanced variation when opponent advances the pawn on e5. That that is a very challenging line because uh, White has gained some serious space in the center already uh, before you have started moving your pieces. That's what Carlson decides to do here and plays pawn to e5. So bishop comes to f4, f5 first before closing the, di the diagonal for the bishop. Uh, here Carlsen develops the knight on d2, pawn to e6, standard move. Now, as you see, uh, black has already got a very solid structure in the center uh, against white, who has got some space in the center. So both the players are pretty much happy with what uh, they have chosen so far. Now here, Carlson plays knight to b3. That was kind of a strange move because uh, we generally see that you should not uh, repeat your moves in the initial part of the opening, but rather just develop all the pieces. But because he had played uh, knight to d2, that was closing the diagonal of the bishop as well. So he had to move the knight in the next move. And we'll see how this knight uh, is very helpful here on b3 very soon. So here Navarra chooses to develop his knight on uh, d7. Probably the idea is to control on uh, c5 because otherwise if the knight comes on c5 and you take with the bishop, you are losing out your dark square bishop, which is pretty much important to you. Or, and you are giving away uh, your knight, which was probably in the corner uh, in the game. Here Carlson plays f3, uh, knight to f3, sorry. And Navarra responds with a6. Uh, the idea behind a6 uh, is, I don't get the idea because it was actually very passive. Uh, and also because you have played uh, c6 here, uh, you are just making sure that uh, the bishop will never come on b5. But probably he wanted to play uh, in the next move, uh, pawn to uh, c5, and that would lose control uh, of the b5. So that's why he played uh, a6 here. So Magnus uh, continues developing uh, his pieces, bishop to e2 here. And yes, uh, here uh, Navarra plays pawn to c5. That's why he moved a6 at that point of time. 
now again Carlson has a couple of options he can take on with the pawn he can take on with the knight or he can just ignore it and proceed with his development that's what Carlson does uh, he plays pawn to c3 and defends the, uh, adds an extra defender to the pawn uh, on d4 now here uh, again Navarre is playing very passive here waiting for Magnus to finish his development he plays pawn to h6 this h6 is also helpful because uh, in these lines if bishop comes up uh, on the g5 that can be annoying at times because now you either have to move your queen uh, for which you haven't got a right square so far uh, your king side is also not developed so you are willing to develop your pieces but you are forced to move queen first uh, if you don't want to move the queen then your couple of options remaining are maybe bishop to e7 in that case uh, white has a weakness here which is the dark square bishop and the dark square bishop for black is a very strong point so you don't want to exchange your strong uh, with your opponent's weak part so that can be tricky if you get your knight on uh, e7 that's also problematic because now you are closing the diagonal for the bishop and bishop will have to be uh, found a good place uh, that can only be remaining was g7 and then you have to push your pawns forward so again problematic so that's why you just want to avoid the move uh, bishop to uh, uh, the bishop to uh, g5 so that's why you play pawn to h6 here he takes on the pawn on c5 uh, making sure that there's some exchange happening now navara has got a couple of options either to take with the knight or the bishop he chooses to take with the bishop which is the best move as well just uh, let's just see what happens if he takes with the knight the problem with taking with the knight is if now uh, magnus magnus doesn't have to take here because he can just continue developing his pieces and the point is after knight here magnus has to retrieve the bishop now because he needs to safeguard the bishop and you are given too much of space already uh, to white towards your queen side which is already open um, the bishop is also eyeing towards the same so a lot of stuff can happen very quickly uh, also you if you now take on the knight that's pro problematic because you can open up the a file for the opponent or even the queen development can happen uh, which with which queen will be attacking on the b7 very quickly so Navara takes on uh, with the bishop here and now Carlton has to take on uh, the bishop because that square bishop is very important and it was developed so he takes on um, Navara takes back with the knight and now uh, straight away Carlson places bishop in front of the knight uh, on bishop to e3 now there was no defender of the knight here yes uh, Navara should have actually played the rook to c8 because that's a rook on the semi-open file which is always helpful that defends on the knight but probably uh, Navara wanted uh, the knight back in the game and he wanted to play with it so he just brings it back and now Carlson goes behind the bishop uh, again on f5 by moving knight to d4 and here uh, that's the way of defending your pieces uh, there are a couple of options you can take your bring bring back your bishop uh, on uh, the g6 or the h7 and the bishop will be pretty safe but what Navara does here is plays knight to e7 the idea is simple now if you take you, you are not spoiling my pawn structure anytime now because I will now take with the knight and knight gets developed with the tempo attacking the dark square bishop as well so these are things which you can always learn from these kind of games that how to develop your pieces with with some tempo in the game and now Magnus plays f4 uh, trying to make sure that the pawn on e5 is also guarded now because uh, earlier black was pretty much uh, worried of defending the bishop and developing his pieces now that is done uh, black can definitely go for capturing on e5 so he defends by playing f4 and now uh, navara plays his bishop on e4 now that's a pretty solid square uh, for the, the light square bishop it's not going to re be removed very soon and that controls that always eyes the king side and also not to forget when the lines get opened up uh, the files get opened up on b uh, on b or c this bishop is always eyeing on the b1 where generally your rook will end up being and that can be a miss not at the grandmaster level but 
I'm just trying to make sure that everything is being covered. So uh, that can be one thing which you can miss out sometimes uh, because you are just thinking of the king side that the bishop is attacking, but bishop is attacking both the ways. So here Magnus castles and uh, knight to c6 uh, by Navara trying to go for knight exchange. So Magnus takes uh, and here Navara takes back with the b pawn. Uh, of course, he has the only option by taking with, with the b-pawn, but even if you have an option to take with some other piece here, maybe rook here uh, on the c8, you should always take with the pawn. The idea is to make sure that you always have connected pawns. Uh, connected pawns, especially in the center, are pretty pretty good. Here, uh, Magnus plays pawn to c4, trying to break through uh, in, the white's in the black's position. Also, if you notice that king is in the center still, so opening up the center will be very nice from white. Uh, Navara understands the threat here and just castles to safety. Uh, Magnus goes for the exchange in the center. Uh, so does Navara, takes back with the c-pawn on d5. And there are a couple of files which are, uh, which are completely open, which are the b and c file. and uh, not completely open, C is semi-open, and so is D. But B the, the C file is completely opened up. Uh, so that's where and generally rooks come uh, and take a, try to take advantage of the C file. That's what happens in the game eventually, I believe. Uh, but before that, uh, pawn to F6 here, trying to break the center. Magnus takes uh, on the F6. And now uh, Navara takes back with the queen, aligning his pieces. Also, uh, the queen is now eyeing the rook on a1. So now probably, yes, now rook comes to c1, the open file. Here, um, Navara plays uh, pawn to e5, going for the exchange in the center again. Uh, but Magnus chooses to place his bishop first uh, on d3. He has a bishop pair, which is pretty much helpful. He's trying to just make sure the bishops, both the bishops are pretty much centralized and attacking everything. Here, uh, Navara chooses to move his queen on g6. The idea is to defend the bishop uh, if he now takes. He's not going to spoil his pawn structure for, uh, for taking on the bishop, but he can take back with the queen. That's what happens in the game. It, they go for bishop exchange, and uh, now Navara takes with the queen uh, on e4. Uh, of course, he had to save the bishop here, so Magnus played rook to e1. Uh, and also, it's a standard move. Whenever you see an uh, opponent's queen somewhere, you just try to place the rook in front of it. And that's what Carlsen does. Now here, pawn to d4 by Navara. And Carlsen tries to activate his queen by moving it to b3. King goes to h8. And now bishop to d2, having a discover attack on the queen. Queen goes back on the f5, trying to take control of the pawns as well. And now Magnus offers him queen exchange. Now that was pretty strange uh, move, I believe, because uh, yes, you are doing a queen exchange, which is completely fine, but you are spoiling your pawn structure as well. And pawn structure is something which is very critical at the end game. But again, he's the world champion. He knows better how to deal with that. So he goes fairly into it uh, and spoils his pawn structure as well just going for the exchange. Uh, pawn takes on uh, f4. Magnus responds with uh, rook to c4, attacking the pawn. Uh, here, Navara plays rook to d8, centralizing his rook, and also making sure that the knight can now have a discover attack uh, on the d4. Here, Magnus played uh, rook to e6, with the idea is to capture on the pawn. So Magnus has a very a brilliant idea and he always follows that it's very simple actually but it's very complicated to be implemented whatever move you play he will just try to counter attack the same move at that point of time now if you notice we just uh, navara had just moved the rook away from the a file and that's what magnus does trying to take advantage of the same move by placing his rook on the e6 uh, attacking the the a6 pawn which is now undefended so Navara plays uh, rook to f6 here, that defends the pawn. So uh, a nice move by Navara as well. So Magnus goes back now on e4. 
Now he has a couple of rooks aligned uh, on the E file and the pawn probably is not going anywhere now. So now uh, Navar understands that and plays a knight to B6 attacking the rook. So he takes uh, Magnus takes on the pawn on D4 with his rook. The rook exchange happened on D4 and it's a pretty much equal game from here on. Both are grandmasters so you don't expect any uh, any mistake or inaccuracy from these players and the game proceeds from here a pawn to g5 uh, since uh, Navara had pawns uh, uh, in a better shape so he just wanted to cash it on them so he plays a pawn to g5 connecting his pawns here Magnus responds with pawn to h4 the idea is simple if you capture now you are losing out on the pawn chain plus your double pawns on the edge file will be bad. So Navara understands that and plays king to g7. Again, a good lesson for all the uh, players who are watching it. Try to move your king in the center uh, in the end game. That's very effective. That's what Navara also does here. Magnus takes on the g5 and uh, Navara takes back uh, with this pawn. Carlson goes for the pawn break again so that he weakens up his pawn chain. Navara plays uh, king to g6 here instead. So now Carlson also starts moving his king towards the center by playing king to g2. Now Navara finally decides to take on the pawn and he does a capture on the h4. Magnus takes back uh, the pawn on f4. The bishop is guarded with the rook, so no threats there. And then now rook to c6, trying to maybe go on the on the seventh on the second rank and take on the pawn. So of course Magnus sees that and plays king to uh, f3. Black responds with king to f5, f, and then bishop goes back on e3 the idea is uh, there's a discover attack after the rook moves on the knight and the bishop and knight probably can be exchanged uh, if of course Magnus wants to so he's, he sees the threat coming probably at the end so Navara plays rook to c3 pinning this bishop so that just in case a discover attack also comes on the knight he can just simply move the king now because the bishop cannot take on the knight because it's pinned so now Magnus gives a check. Uh, Carlson goes to e5. Magnus takes on the pawn. Now knight to c4 attacking the bishop. Probably some exchange is about to happen. Magnus plays king to e4. Uh, sorry, rook to e4. King goes to d5. Now Magnus plays his king ahead on f f4. And Navara chooses to exchange the pieces. And that's pretty much in his favor because his king is more towards uh, these pawns and probably can take on them pretty comfortable and that would be a draw from there. Uh, that's what happens in the game. They exchange uh, the pieces. The king is more closer. Uh, the black king is more closer to the, to the white pawns. So he just goes towards them. And white cannot defend his pawn there. So uh, Navara takes it. Of course, uh, here uh, it's a tricky move if you just try to uh, are going for a win you, you you are probably going to if you just sideline something and you can just lose a pawn but that those things don't happen in the grandmaster level games you have to play a pawn here no other option and both the players exchange everything and those two kings in the center uh, lie there uh, and it's a draw so a fantabulous game i would say uh karo Khan defense a very strong one even Magnus Carlsen finds it very tough to break. Uh, so that's what was special about this game. And if you see the computer analysis, it was completely ruthless. It was completely draw. Some fight there by Magnus initially in the middle game. There was slight advantage of 0 0.5, 0 0.3 somewhere. Uh, one dip in between going to 0 0.5 in favor of black. Uh, had he played the rook here on d6, but that's critical to be find in that tournament that point of time because after he takes of course he can move the knight and probably take some advantage from here uh, but that is something which is pretty tough to be found there at that point of time even if you see now the evaluation is just 0.3 and this game can have lots of computations from there and 
do, those are computer lines you generally don't see, which is okay. Both the players fight it out well. Uh, it was an interesting game for everyone to be watched. And for us, definitely, we learned a lot of things from the game. So that's all uh, is important. We'll keep learning and growing yeah, and improving your chess. So, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Please do subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. And, yep, yeah, thanks so much for feedback, appreciation, and everything. Do like the video, comment, and see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.